What sort of strategies do you have to help you create the best life that you're living? I want to share with you a philosophy, a five finger philosophy to be exact. This is a strategy that my mother's mentor passed on to her and that she has given to me and I would love to share it with you because these five fingers here and what they represent have the power to actually help you create a life you absolutely love living. Check it out. So this best life strategy, the five finger philosophy for a great life comes from Jack Boland. Now Jack passed many years ago, but he was my mother's mentor. He actually only mentored three people, Mary Morrissey, my mom, Les Brown and Wayne Dyer. And so he had many philosophies and many strategies, but this one is easy to remember, easy to implement. And so I want to share it with you today. And so take a look at your hand right now, those five fingers. And the first step is thumbs up, it's thumbs up to life. And this means have a positive attitude about life. When you wake up in the morning, are you anticipating something good is going to happen? Or are you like, here we go again, another day. Oh my gosh. There's a great story about two kids that these researchers want to find out how these two kids are going to respond under different environments. So they take one kid who's kind of a negative kind of kid and they put him in a room full of all the coolest toys you could imagine for that kid. Had all the latest and greatest gadgets and toys. They put another kid in a room full of manure and they left him there for an hour. And the researchers watched what happened and the, the kid who went into the room full of toys, the pessimistic kid, uh, started to play with toys but very quickly started to notice the toys that weren't there started noticing the toy, well, they don't have this toy and they don't have the companion to this fighter and they don't have this and the other toys that were broken and didn't work quite right. And he was always looking for what was missing or what was wrong. The other kid who was an optimist went into the room full of manure and he's in manure up to his knees and he's tossing manure up in the air and he's like, woo, yeah, what's up? And the researchers go in and they ask this kid, what are you doing in this room full of manure? And he's like, well, with all this manure in here, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> and so that kid was looking for the good. So the thumbs up today is look for the good. There's some good seeking to happen in your life this day. Be awake to what that might be. Be aware of that possibility and you will attract it into your life. Number two is your pointer finger. And this is point your way down the day. That means what is your intention for this day? If you're like me, you believe that your thoughts create your reality. And it's really easy in the culture we live in, in the daily grind, in all the stuff we're experiencing, to forget to actually set our intentions, right? The people, if you really believe that your thoughts create your reality, and you really believe that, how much time do you take in the morning to actually set your intention and consciously create your day? When you do that, it makes a massive difference because energy flows where your attention goes. So in the mornings, point your way down the day. What that means is set your intention on your phone, write out what intention do you have for this day? What is your vision for the life that you would love living? The more you keep that in front of you and in your consciousness, the more you create. The world literally organizes itself to become a match for the vision that you have for your life. Number three is your middle finger here. And this is flick fear in the face. And the reason why is because fear is the border of the life that we've known. In other words, when we're inside our comfort zone, in order to stretch into a new result, there will always be fear. Fear that gives you all the reasons it won't work. Fear that gives you all the, the pain that might happen. If you endeavor in this, you'll look like a fool. You'll fall flat on your face. You're going to get hurt again. You better pull back. You better stay safe. The reason that fear is there, that paradigm is there because it wants to keep you stuck. In order for you to have that new life, you have to lean in and move in the direction of what scares you. That is the law of this life and no one escapes it. And there was a woman that I coached in the Manifest Your Man program. She was in her 60s and she was very successful. Her major fear was, how can I find the man of my dreams? Because I don't want to go online because if I go online, people will recognize me and they will judge me 
and I'm afraid of what that judgment will be and how that will affect my business. And there were all these fears. And when she actually pulled the layers back, she realized that those fears were just smoke and mirrors. Those fears were conjured up by her paradigm that was trying to keep her single. She said, you know what? If I do want to meet my man, I'm going to have to put myself out there. I'm going to have to risk. She put herself online. She ended up meeting an amazing man. They're in a relationship today. And she wrote me back saying, oh my gosh, Matt, I am so grateful for the encouragement to move through that fear because it was that moment that changed my entire life. And it's that moment that will change your life. When you move in the direction of fear, you give yourself permission to feel, be, feel afraid and move forward anyway, that's when everything changes. Number four is your ring finger. This is your commitment finger. This is what are you committed to in life? And knowing what you're committed to is important because it also helps you know what you're not committed to. Often we get overwhelmed in life when we start saying yes to too many things. We start saying yes to agreements that we don't, that aren't really of our highest values of our priority in life. We say yes to the things that don't really matter to us. And then we're overwhelmed by all the responsibilities that we've assumed. There's a great story from seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey, where this professor comes into this college class and he's got a, a glass jar and he's got different items on the table. And he says, he fills up the glass jar with these big rocks and he fills it all the way up to the top. And he says, class, is this jar full? And he can't put another big rock in. And so most of the class goes, yeah, that jar is full. And then he pulls from under the desk pebbles and he fills in the interspaces between the big rocks with pebbles. And he goes and the, and the jar fills up even more. And he goes, is this jar full now? And the class now is sort of on to the professor. And so some of them say, yeah, it's full. And others say, well, I wonder what else he's got under the desk. And no, it's not full. And then he pulls out sand and he puts sand in and sand filters down into all the gaps in between the pebbles. And he says, now is this full? And most of the class says, yeah, it's full. And he pulls out water and he fills up the jar with water. And he goes, here's what's interesting. If I did this in reverse order and I put in the water first, then the sand, then the pebbles, there would be no way that I'm getting these big rocks into this jar. The big rocks represent what you value most in your life. Make sure that goes in first. Make sure that you create time for what you value most, your family, your spiritual life, your health, the relationship that you want in your life. Often we'll put We'll put in other stuff that other people's agendas, what's important to other people, and that fills up our life first. And then what matters most to us doesn't get in and that creates suffering. So what are you committed to and what are you willing to say no to so that your big rocks are able to fit in your life? And the last finger here is your pinky finger and it's little, right? And it stands for let the little things in life tickle you. And that is where is the joy? Where's the fun? That isn't somewhere out there. It's right inside of you. The joy and the fun in your life is ready to be unlocked and it's ready to be unleashed and it's ready to be amplified, increased in your life. And it isn't because something is happening. It is because of a choice you're making to find the fun. It's a choice you're making to let the little things in life tickle you, be impressed by the amazing world that we live in and create fun and laughter in what it is that you're doing. My grandmother, was a master at this. My grandmother was the woman and my grandfather, when they were married, inspired me to live my passion and purpose of teaching and speaking and learning about love. And so while we were on a trip around the United States interviewing America's greatest marriages, we were in an RV, my best friend, myself, a documentary film crew, my grandmother. And on that trip, we stopped to grab lunch and we were late. We had to grab a quick lunch and then get to the next place to interview these couples. So we could interview these couples before we had to be at the next town. And I was running Mach 3. We were going fast through this trip. And there's a moment I will never forget. We were going to lunch. And as we walk into the restaurant, I turn around and my grandma, my grandma who was behind me, is nowhere to be seen. I'm like, where's grandma? I walk out the door and I don't see grandma and I walk down the sidewalk and then I see grandma at the corner and grandma is bending down and smelling the roses. And I thought to myself, man, there's a quote that says, who you are being speaks so loudly, I can't even hear what you're saying. And she was being the woman who was finding joy in the little things. 
It didn't matter this trip and getting to the next agenda. She was willing to stop. She was willing to soak in some joy. And the truth of the matter is we did have time to do that. I was just rushing faster than I really needed to rush. And I walked over to her. I took a deep breath. I put my arm around her. I bent down. I smelled, I smelled the flowers with her. And I thanked her for that lesson in that moment. I said, thank you for teaching me this because I need to enjoy this while it's happening. Otherwise, it's just going to wish by and I'm going to miss it. And the same opportunity is available for you. This day, right now, there's some joy seeking to happen. There's some fun seeking to be created by means of you in this life. And as we soak up the fun, joyous moments, then life becomes so much more rich instead of just trying to get to the end destination. A friend of mine said, I don't want my epitaph to say he was born, he paid his bills, and then he died. He wants to have some fun along the way. So, there you have it, the five finger philosophy for an amazing life. Thumbs up to life, point your way down the day, flick fear in the face, know what you're committed to and let the little things in life tickle you. And when you do that, you up level the joy and love and expression in your life and the lives of those around you. My question for you is, what philosophy do you have for what creates a great life in your life? What strategy do you use? Go ahead and post in the comment section below and we're going to create some great strategies below. And this channel, as you know, is all dedicated to helping you live your best life, helping you increase love in the world. So go ahead, click the subscribe button, click the bell because every week we put out new videos to pour into you. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.